Well, here at the Off Grid Channel, it's all about living off grid and the systems we've got in place to make that possible. And one of those systems is well our off grid power. It's a pretty popular topic on my channel and it's something that, well, I'm kind of addicted to. I love playing around with batteries and solar panels. So in this video, we're going to have a look at our 24 volt system, each component, break it down into detail and have a look and see how it works. So here at the cabin, we have our power shed and that is where our 24 volt system and our 48 volt system is housed. So let's go in here, let's have a look. So there is our two systems, 48 volt system and the 24 volt system. So what I've done here for ease for you when you're looking at these videos, our 24 volt system is marked as 24 here. So you can see all the components and the 48 volt system, when the phone focuses, there we go, is marked with 48 volt on it. We are going to be focusing on the 24 volt system today. So first, let's step back, go outside and have a look at what panels feed this system. So on the ground here, we have three 190 watt solar panels. These are grid tie solar panels. So the open circuit voltage is around 37 volts. I have them wired up in parallel. So we're still remaining our 37 volts but we are bringing out a total of three times 190, which I think is around about 570 watts. Yeah, I know, they're laying on the ground. Eventually, these are going to be going. I've had these panels, I think I bought these panels about 2009, and they're getting old, and their power production is getting down. I do tend to replace them with some uh, test 12-watt panels, like what we got over there and make some sort of an arrangement to put panels up neaten it up a little bit for this video for the moment let's just focus on just this yes for those that have noticed the panels are in the shade well that is because it's six o'clock in the morning and the sun has yet to come up which is through there over these trees so once the sun comes up over these trees then we'll be laughing so we step back into the solar shed we'll see where the power goes to when it leaves the panels so the power goes straight into this king's 20 amp mppt controller now i'm testing this controller out so this is something that's going to be uh, looked at further on in the future in the channel now these controllers are the ep ever controller rebadged as kings thought i would throw that in for those uh, people that like the king's product so the power comes from the panel it goes into the King controller, which has a remote head going into the cabin. And from there, it goes down into our batteries. Now, our batteries are two King's 120 amp hour lithium ion phosphate batteries. These batteries are thumbs up. They have performed flawlessly since they've been put in here, since I've had them. So I cannot complain about these batteries. They've run really, really well. But it's not about all about the batteries. We need to follow where the power goes. So it goes from our controller up there, and it comes down through this fuse here. Now this fuse is a MIDI fuse. And then from there, it's a bit hard. I've got that zip tied to keep that closed. It comes along this line and goes into our battery. Now that line looks pretty thin on the camera. It is 6 mil cable, and it is rated to 50 amps. So I do want to upgrade that, but for the amount of power we're putting in, which is about 20 amps, that is doing just fine. Now, once the power goes into the batteries, it then leaves the battery, and it comes through the shunt. Now, this is a Victron shunt, and it, it has Bluetooth as well as a meter, which is inside the camera, uh, the camera, the cabin, get that word right. So we'll look at that when we go inside the cabin of those meters. And then from there, the power goes up and it comes up to this inverter here. This inverter is an 1800 watt pure sine wave, low frequency inverter. 
And I tell you a bit of a secret, this is what I used to run when I was on my old off-grid property. This used to run my entire house. And yes, you can run a house on 1800 watts if you're conservative with your power. Now it has a whopping big transformer in here. So they are heavy, but they are designed for continuous use. And this brand, Electronics, I bought this roughly the same time as I bought those solar panels, 2008, 2009, something like that. And this has performed flawlessly and keeps going today. Great inverter. So the power comes from this inverter, and I've got it coming out to this plug here. So this is just an output plug here. And this line here, so this line here goes into the cabin. Now, for all you Australian people that know about the 15-amp plugs and 15-amp lines, 15-amp lines is usually run a 1.5mm cable. Well, this cable, I have used 2.5mm cable on this line here. So it's not your traditional 1.5mm, it's 2.5mm cable, which I believe takes you up to about 20 amps, something like that. Having a thicker cable gives me less volt, lock, volt drop going into the cabin. Okay, so that's the cable I use. And when we go into the cabin, we'll see where it goes from there. Now, I have just recently put in this iTech World AC to DC charger to charge up my battery. So this will keep the iTech World people happy. And yes, we are going to start doing some more iTech World, we'll bring some iTech World products in here to the off-grid channel and do some tests on them in the future. So this charges the batteries up here if I have a day or a couple of days with no sun. I don't run the generator for this. The generator charges the 48 volt system. And then if I need some power, I turn this on. Now this runs from the AC circuit, which comes from the 24 volt system. Whoops, sorry about that. I just knocked the phone. There's our AC circuit. And that comes from our, sorry, it comes from our 48 volt system. This gets confusing. So 48 volt system is our primary system. And that helps the other systems uh, keep up to date and keep running if I need to borrow some power from them. So that is how I charge up the batteries when the power is low and I have no sun. Rightio, let us go inside the cabin and see where the power goes from there. So if we come into the cabin here and come over to my little electrical corner where I sort of play around with all the electrical gadgets, we can see on the wall here that I have two monitors. Now, one monitor is the monitor that monitors the solar controller. So this one comes up from my solar charge controller. And this monitor, this monitor here is the monitor that comes from that Victron stunt. So the solar controller monitor, that one tells me all about what is happening from those panels coming into the controller. So everything that the controller is doing. And we can see that the sun is starting to creep up past the trees and we're starting to produce power. So at the moment, we're getting, we've only got 1.3 amps coming in because we've still got shading on those panels. Once the shading goes, we pump in roughly around about 16 amps into the battery. Now this one up here is the monitor that comes from the shunt and that is telling us everything that is the shunt is seeing. And I have that set just sitting on our state of charge so I know how much power is left in those batteries. And we've got 76% of power in the batteries. So today we'll get them charged up. So if we move into the kitchen of the cabin and just over in the corner here, we have a power distribution block. Now this is the power that comes from that 1800 watt 24 volt inverter and it comes into this distribution block. Now the distribution block, move this kettle out of the way, has on it, excuse my hands being in the way here, it has a safety switch and overcurrent device on it. So if I get overcurrent, then it'll trip that for overcurrent, although that is a 16 amp breaker, so it's very unlikely my inverter is going to produce enough power to switch that off with its overcurrent breaker. But it's also an RCBO, so if I get any ground fault or earth leakage, that is going to trip. So our circuit from our 24 volt inverter is protected by that RCBO there. So this power block has some devices plugged into it. So we've got a couple of devices here plugged into it, and we've got a couple of 
uh, extension lines plugged into it. And what this runs is, well, let me show you. It runs my air fryer. It runs my toaster. It also runs my microwave. And it also, down here, runs the King's Dual Zone fridge freezer. Now I used to run that off DC with a 12 volt DC line, but that line is too long and I get too much volt drop, so I've chosen to run it off the AC, and that runs off our 24 volt inverter. Now I have done a video on this and we're doing some testing on it, so in the future I'm going to do some more follow up videos, but so far it's a thumbs up for the King's Dual Zone. I haven't had any issues at all with that fridge. Now I don't run all of those appliances all at the one time because it's an 1800 watt inverter and it's not going to say run my microwave as the air fryer is going while I'm doing some toast. I mean, it's not going to do that so I just run it one at a time and most people living off grid will understand how that all works. So we still need to be careful on how we use our power. Now I've also got this electric kettle here. Now this electric kettle pulls 2200 watts. Now my inverter, the 24 volt inverter, will actually surge for 2200 watts for half an hour. And then it does something like five kilowatts for uh, a surge for five seconds. So it will run this, but it's really pushing it. So this high current draw appliance I run from the 48 volt system which feeds into these power points into the cabin. Now I also have an induction cooker over here. So this induction cooker is a twin plate induction cooker. This side is 1000 watts. This side is 1400 watts. So that 24 volt inverter will run this induction cooker if you're only using one hot plate at a time. But a lot of times when I cook, I use both hot plates. So I make this run off the 48 volt system just for ease so I don't trip out the inverter. So the 24 volt system runs a lot of appliances in my kitchen and it does a pretty good job at that. Now I also run a 12 volt system as well as a 48 volt system and I know some of you are going to think well wouldn't it be easier just to run one system like a 48 volt system and run everything off that? Well it kind of is However, I'm addicted to playing around with solar panels, batteries, inverters, kind of all the electrical stuff, and I've been doing it ever since I was a young teenager. So, I can't help myself. I've got to build different voltage systems and play around with it, and I also like testing it. And I know a lot of my subscribers and people who watch this channel like that as well, so that's why I run multiple systems, is because, more mainly, it's my hobby. It's something that I enjoy doing. The other advantage of having multiple voltage systems or multiple systems is if one system goes down for any reason, an inverter fails or, or something fails, you've got another system as a backup because I am not connected to power here at the off-grid channel and the off-grid cabin. So if one of my systems goes down, my power stops. So having other systems and a backup generator definitely makes it a lot easier. And it's fun. So anyway, that is a look at the 24 volt system. I've got the 12 volt system, the 48 volt system. If you want to have a look at any of those systems, just leave a comment below, let me know, and we will accommodate you with those videos. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below. And wait for the next awesome video that's coming out, you guessed it, on the Off Grid channel. Well, I'm kind of addicted to playing with solar panels, batteries, and trip over that rock to make a blooper. <laughs> ah, don't you love it?